Clock 45. There's a snake on the table. Yes, I uh, requested a snake. Hang along. Isn't that pretty? It's a python, as you know. If you saw the uh, Sunday shoot around you or an Instagram, you, you know that we have it and have been shooting it uh, for several days. And we're going to let you know what we think about it. <clears throat> Is that okay? Yeah, uh, you may not be in the market. You may not be a revolver, uh, you know, collector shooter as much. You ought to be. What's wrong with you? Uh, maybe you don't like Colt revolvers. I don't know. But the Python is a classic, iconic, and they have reintroduced uh, it. Is that right? They brought it out again, okay? It was, I think it started around 55, 1955, not 2055. It ran through in terms of uh, standard production until about 2000, 1999. Then you could get it, I think, in the custom shop for another four or five years. But they've not made it in 15 years or more. And it's a standard item, you know, over 20 years, I guess. And so now it's back. And there's a lot of hoopla about it. And so I want to try to give you a realistic approach at it, of it, to it, like we, we always do. And you know I like revolvers. I like the Python. Coincidentally, and I didn't know this was coming back out, you know, we've uh, done a video recently on, on my six inch Python that I, uh, you know, Gosh, when was it? It's been several months ago that I purchased. And uh, I decided to re-enter the Python world. And I thought, you know, well, let's not wait till Colt brings another one out. Let's just go ahead and let me spend a bunch of bucks on an old one. <laughs> and then this one comes out, right? Now, I'm glad I bought it. I don't regret it. Uh, and I got a pretty good buy on it for what they sell for. But anyway, the new one, the 2020 Python. That's what this is about. And I wanted to show it to you before we shoot it while it's clean. I, I've been shooting it a fair amount. And I cleaned it up here just a minute ago. I wanted you to see it in its clean splendor. Okay? It is a, they call it a semi-bright uh, stainless. And, uh, you know, it's not highly polished. But it looks pretty good. And uh, there it is, inside and out. Uh, you metallurgists out there, maybe you notice something about the metal. All right, so let's help. All right, I'm gonna fire. These aren't the first shots, but I'm gonna fire it. All right, I'm gonna try to fire it a fair amount. Is that okay in this video? <laughs> Double action. Boom. Hey, let's get the Kentucky two liter right away. Get it out of my face. Oh, and let's smoke a little pot right away. Woo. Wow. Hey, that python is a real pot smoker. Did you notice that? So, uh, hey, it shoots. It works. So, yeah. Uh, been shooting it, and uh, as I said in the shooting, or Sunday shoot around, I showed it. Uh, it uh, uh, the first, I don't know, the first round of, of, of ammo or two, I, a couple of times, it sort of hung up, and like, oh, cylinder wouldn't continue turning, you know, and had to kind of jiggle it and get it going, and, and uh, that's not good. And, but I shot some more, and then I cleaned it, and, you know, scrubbed it up, and I don't know if there was a piece of powder, uh, grit or something in there, or if it was just a little burr on the metal, uh, so I don't know. Uh, but I've not had that since at all. I've been, I've been pulling that trigger a lot and shooting it a lot, and essentially trying to get it to do that again. I've not been able to get it to do that again. And that was kind of right out of the box thing, okay? But I wanted to bring it to your attention. You know, sometimes, uh, you, know, you know, this is one sample. We'll do a firearm and, uh, and we'll not have any trouble with it, and other people will have a lot of trouble with theirs, or vice versa. Yeah, so always keep in mind, this is one example of the new 2020 Colt Python. I hope... As I said in the Sunday shoot around, I hope, and that's our new series, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, every Sunday, I post, okay, kind of keep up to date on things, do a little shooting, a lot of yakking. But uh, uh, I am pleased with the firearm at this point. And uh, it's not exactly like the other, the old Pythons, but it's pretty close, closer than I expected, okay? As I said in that video, I, I have to kind of eat my words because I've been saying, I don't know if I want Colt to bring this thing back out. It would be, it'd either be three or $4,000 or it'd be trash. You know, it'd be junky and who'd want it. I just couldn't see any way they could make it. Uh, you know, and the Python is, is sacred in a lot of ways. 
It's like the cold single action, you know. I want it the right way or don't make it at all. And so I have to eat my words a little bit, okay? Uh, let me, let me, well, I'll shoot these six and I'll, I'll do it, put them together for you. But I do have to eat my words a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll say that right off. Uh, bottom line is I am more impressed with it than I thought I would be, okay? And we'll see how it goes. You know, it could be that people start having lots of trouble with them or something. I hope not, because I want it to be successful. And I have already seen a few things online about somebody having some trouble with a couple of different things, light hammer strikes and whatnot. Uh, but hopefully, and you can have a problem with any, you know, single example or sample of, of, of any firearm, of course. But we'll see. The truth always comes out on the Internet, doesn't it? as well as the fiction. <laughs> we, we get both on this thing called the internet. All right, let's shoot these six. Oh, let's just shoot the tree. Woo! <laughs> Three, uh, 357 Magnum tends to knock those uh, limbs around, doesn't it? <laughs> and you might notice, and since we're celebrating pythons here today, I uh, appreciate AppMix, brought out the gold. All right, went to the lockbox. Look at that, got a big chunk of gold, got the coin. But anyway, we appreciate AppMix. Notice gold's a little bit softer, you know, uh, so you can, <laughs> that's foam, of course. Uh, that's not, and that's a, you, in other words, you can get a, a large chunk of gold, that's just an ounce, or a really small chunk of piece of gold, you know. Uh, and, you know, Atmex is a great outfit, uh, great reputation, and hope you'll check them out. Check out our description, okay? They've got Hickok 45's favorite page, then Atmex.com there. Go through that link. Check them out, okay? Appreciate their help. Speaking of precious metal, we thought with all this other precious metal on the table, you know, this is just precious metal day. Brass, stainless, carbon steel, wood. What well, wood's not metal, is it? Gold. All right. So, Wow, what am I forgetting? Okay, let's look. Let's look here. Now, if you had, when I got this, I was almost afraid to open the box. Although I'd seen some of the early, you know, infomercial videos on it, but I was almost afraid to open the box uh, because I thought, okay, I'm going to see this and I'm going to say, oh gosh, Colt, why did you bother? Come on. But I didn't have that impression. I, honestly, there are some differences, but by and large, it's a python. Okay they have made a python for a lot less money than you would have to pay for an old one okay now 1500 bucks is not cheap you'll probably be able to get it for less than that i, I would guess once they've caught it with demand the other maybe 12 or 13 i don't know i don't know uh, but uh, right now there are people you know, they, they're shipping and you see people have them they've got theirs and they put it on gun broker somewhere and they're trying to get 2000 out of it and that sort of but that'll subside hopefully once they catch up and I hope they do. I hope they can make these uh, in big enough numbers to meet demand. Yeah, because Python's a cool gun in general. Obviously, I wouldn't have bought this one or the other three or four I've owned in my life. Okay? Even though I went for a long spell, as I explained to you uh, in this video, without one. Just decided I needed one. Again. Okay. So... This is, uh, I, as I say, I am more impressed with it than I thought I would be. And, and I'm, I'm just going to, you know, obviously, as always, be honest with you. Not, I don't want to sound like an infomercial, but I, I am, I'm going to sound a little bit like that because I am pleasantly surprised that they were able to take the Python and, and they didn't muck it up. M-U-C-K. They did not muck up the project. It, you know, it seems okay unless... We hear a lot differently in, in the uh, you know, coming months, and people are having all kinds of crazy problems with them or something. You know, you never know. Time will tell. But this one has done fine, except for that little glitch I was telling you about, and it just, I can't get it to do it again. All right? It does it. It just won't do it again. All right, look, a quick look. We may do a separate video just to compare the two in detail. But uh, you can see it's pretty true to the original. You got a couple of things. The grip's a little thicker on the originals, at least mine. This one made in 81. This screw's in a little different place, you know, on the plate. Uh, the plate seems to come a little farther forward. There's not a cylinder stop, uh, at least on the frame. Doesn't seem to be needed. The Colt rampant cold is etched instead of, I guess, roll mark. Uh, you got a little difference on the roll mark on the barrel. You don't have the cartridge, CTG, you know, like big deal. 
Uh, you got that same ejector rod. See, as you look at the, the pieces, they didn't say, well, let's make it more like a Smith or a Taurus or some other. You know, it, it is a Python. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a serration on the eject or the uh, cylinder latch there you don't have on there. Little things like that that you might not even notice. Uh, the rear sight's a little different design. You might notice that. It's, it's very similar, but it's a little different. So is the front sight. You notice the front sight on the old one is it takes two pins that have to come out. Yeah, maybe gunsmithing, unless you're pretty handy. With this one, you just take a, we're obviously empty, cylinder open, but you take a, a hex wrench and just loosen that and you replace that sight with the same sights that go on the King Cobra. Uh, that sight's nice. I like a, a red ramp sight like that. I wish I had it on, on mine. Maybe I'll take it off and put it, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, hammer's a little different. Uh, the spur and I'm not sure you know I don't know as much maybe as some of you about the entire Python history they may have changed that spur a little bit like their cold single actions at various times the spur is a little different on there I think I like the old spur better than that one but you know not a big deal every little change I see on it or difference I think okay I don't know why they did that but it doesn't you know, it's not a deal killer. You know, it's not something that makes me want to gag or anything. You know, even the, the etching of the horse, you know, some people might think that's better. It's, it's kind of neat. Uh, uh, now, over here, we've got a negative. We've got the barcode, you know. I, I, I don't like that too much. It's not too conspicuous. And the serial number's on the frame, whereas on the old one, it's, it's under the latch there. So that, that's really a better place for the serial number, in my opinion. The barrel has a little different markings on the right. You see that. Uh, I don't know that it's any worse. You might like it better. You know, it's got the Colt, Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, so nothing about that is a big turnoff to me. You know, uh, so most of I'm, I'm talking about cosmetics. The grips are not as nice, I think. Uh, I guess that's a laminate. And the one thing I don't like about the grips as much is they're not as thick. When I shoot it one-handed uh, with the Magnums, I can feel it. You know, the thickness of these grips helps in that regard. So if I were and I if I if I owned it, I'd probably look for some uh, bigger grips, at least slightly bigger. I want wood. I like the Colt medallion. I don't want to get away from that necessarily. John's noticed the Colt medallion is recessed a little more on that side than it is on this one. Not as impressed with some of that woodwork on the grips necessarily. Uh, so you got that. Uh, this one is a little beefier in the frame back here. It is just slightly thicker. I put the calipers on it. I mean, just ever so slightly thicker. Okay, supposedly it will withstand the, the hot magnums better. Okay, it's got a, uh, I think a 1 in 14 twist in the barrel. Supposedly good for almost any of the modern bullets. It's a six groove barrel. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Some other differences will come to me. But by and large, it, it is a python. And it, it doesn't strike you as, <laughs> hey, did you get that one? It doesn't strike you, this Python, as being a uh, like a cheaper, uh, lame attempt to make a Python. And that's what I was afraid I would see, a cheaper, lame attempt. Now, you may think it's lame. Uh, and I don't know, maybe in a couple of ways you could, you could use that word, perhaps. But it, overall, it doesn't seem to be lame. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me shoot something. Oh, let's let's put it on the gong. All right. All right. Let's see if we can hit a double action. Boom. Let's try a two-liter double action down here, a red one. Uh, click, click, click. So I've been trying, especially when I have ammo in it, dead rounds, fired rounds, to, to get us to do that, what I was talking about earlier, and I've not been able to do it. Uh, that's sort of, they sort of serve as snap caps, you know. It, uh, so that was a bird, I guess, or something on it when it was original. So I, I think I'm safe in, in saying this one has no problems, okay? Now, as far as the trigger, since I was just using the trigger, it reminded me of the trigger. Uh, it has a different trigger. That's one of the differences. It's a simpler trigger, supposedly, not as fragile. The old pythons, as great as they are, they were there was so much handwork in them that the triggers would not always come out the same. 
and, and they were kind of bad about stacking. You know, by that, you get a little heavier as you get back with it. And uh, they're also, they would get out of tune pretty well. Great revolvers, great guns, but I guess they're a little bit like a race car, you know, a highly tuned race car that might be like the ultimate, but still it required maybe more upkeep or work, you know. Uh, and they were a little bit like that. Uh, that's why I think I said in the video, I probably mainly not shoot a lot of Magnums in this one. And uh, it's in really good shape and I didn't want to abuse it. Uh, and plus they're so valuable, you hate to shoot the heck out of them. Uh, this, that's one of the positives of this, I think. Uh, one reason that I kind of like it, it's, it's really still, it's still a python. Okay, I was afraid it wouldn't be. <laughs> and you know what I mean by that. I, mean, it, I still feel like it's a python. It's, it's, it's really pretty, pretty nice. But yet, it's got a simpler action, and in some ways better. And I don't think you would have the problems in, a, you know, I mean, you might with a specific one, because again, there was a video where somebody was having trouble, the cylinder wasn't turning, you know, so he's having an issue. But again, that's one, and there's not many out there people are shooting much yet, at least as we're filming this. But uh, it, it should be, it should withstand more abuse, more shooting, and not end up with that, those issues that you have with the older pythons, you know, where the timing can get off more easily, I think. You folks that are gunsmiths, you're a python gunsmith, a colt gunsmith or whatever, you know, uh, share what you know. I, I've heard conflicting stories on pythons my entire shooting career. Um, I never competed with them and, you know, mine have always done okay. But I have noticed some of them, they, the lockup is kind of weird on a couple of them I had and some things. But I, I think that's probably a good thing. This is more, I see this as more as a shooter, really. And, and I, as I said somewhere, uh, Instagram or video, I will probably buy one. Uh, I'll probably get the four and a quarter ma uh, barrel, I think. And just as a shooter, kind of a companion to uh, my 686. Uh, and, you know, and again, they really could have, if I compare this to my uh, 686, which I really like, the, you know, 357 Magnum, the same kind of same L frame and everything. You know, the, the key lock is really obnoxious to me. And I, I could like this, you know, as a shooter, uh, as much or more than my 686 maybe, or I don't know. As far as actually shooting, I still like the Smith grip. I like the Smith cylinder latch and all that a little more. But this is a gun that I, I feel like it, it's gonna have a good feel. I love the rib and the sights and just shoot it without destroying it, you know, pretty warm rounds. And, you know, I, I, at this point, I'll wait till the final verdicts are in over the next few months or year, but I, I'm going to buy a, uh, I may, I may have to go and get one if I can find one, <laughs> but a four and a quarter, I think I'm going to want one. Let me shoot it again. Okay. So, uh, like I say, you don't know until a lot of people have shot them for a period of time and a lot of them are out there, but, uh, you know, so far, so far, it seems all right. Anything else I hadn't told you about it. I think they're $14.99, I think, MSRP. And uh, you'll probably be able to get them a little less than that, eventually. And, uh, you know, this is stainless. I don't know if they have plans to make them in, uh, with a blue finish or not. Let's shoot some cinder blocks. Yeah, and a cowboy. Right in the middle. All right, cowboy. How about another shot in the middle? Oh, that wasn't so good, was it? Let's try that again. Yeah. That was, I think, right on top of the middle shot. Let <laughs> me try it again. Yeah, all right. Let me try it in the, in the hat. Yeah, it went over it. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, that's I think, two or three in, in the middle. I was just making sure the sights were on, and, uh, and I've got them on. I had to move them a little bit, but I think they're in pretty good shape. I might even go over there on the far hill and pop an animal or two. So, uh, before I do that, is there anything else that, that you're dying to know about it? Uh, let's see. Like I say, I'm not crazy about that. John uh, is not crazy about the grips either. He likes the action on this better than the original. 
okay and i'm kind of that way too as far as a shooter uh it, it seems like the the uh, double action uh hammer distance is not quite as much uh hopefully you know uh, i've not had any light hammer strikes you know as like somebody does was having on the internet and uh but you know time will tell i had not had one yet might have one today okay we'll see and uh and to give you, like, I, I want to make sure I'm not overly exuberant, unnecessarily exuberant, uh, about the fact that Colt has recreated the Python and that it's uh, not bad. I, I just want to make sure I'm seeing this objectively. I had lunch with an old shooter buddy of mine yesterday, and I took this along, put it in a car, because if he hadn't had a chance to see one, and he's a revolver guy. John hadn't seen it until a couple days ago either. And so it's, these are experienced shooters that I know well, John and this other buddy of mine, and they had kind of the same reaction, okay? Yeah, not bad, kind of like it, and talking about maybe wanting to own one, okay? So I'm just kind of letting you know if you have not had a chance to put your hands on one that uh, I think most people, uh, unless they just have an agenda, are not going to totally trash it, okay? There might be certain things about it they don't like at all, but generally I think people are going to be pleased that they've done as well as they have. Bowling pins. Red ones. <laughs> oh, I haven't shot the paper yet. Okay. Now's a real test of accuracy. All right. It's worthless if I can't put one in the blue or the red, right? from this long range. <laughs> I think I hit something behind it. Maybe it's a bowling pin. So I tell you all that, uh, just kind of, one thing hopefully we give you is just, just a, a valid impression of things, okay? Because we shoot so much and shoot so many different firearms, uh, give you a valid look at something. And that's kind of uh, my thinking on it right now. I, I am very pleased. I'm very pleased. I, I want one, okay? I think for variety's sake, I want the four and a quarter. Although, I'm always drawn to the six inch, this, you know, with the, uh, the rib barrel. You know, that's a thing. I was afraid, okay, they're making the python again, and they're going to have to make it inexpensively. So, well, what's it going to be? They're going to have a polymer strip up here for the rib, you know, or something. And those beautiful contours, you know, in the frame. And, you know, they're going to do all that. And on the cylinder... You know, uh, you know, because it's just so expensive to make anything these days. And they've had financial problems at Colt, as we know. They've been in, in and out of bankruptcy, and they're struggling, uh, have been. And so, you know, I, I just was not optimistic. So I have to eat my words right now, it looks like. Uh, do another Hickok was wrong video on this, maybe, as I said. Uh, so... So at this point, I'm I'm pretty impressed. I'm gonna shoot a couple of fusions. We'll let you go here after a little bit. Uh, so what else did you want to know about it? You know, again, the sights are a little different. You know, the oh, I didn't show you the crown. It, it's uh, the barrel kind of recessed and crown there. I think somebody was showing, uh, showing online too. They're having uh, there were a lot of marks on one they had bought. It was like damaged. Uh, this one, you know, hadn't really shown that. Uh, there's probably something I'm forgetting to tell you about it that is semi-important. Your know, trigger's a little bit different, just, just very, very minimally. They're basically, you know, the same firearm. And uh, and I guess I was, I'm going to shoot some, oh, those are 38 Specials I had in there. No, they're not. Those are, there's what's supposed to be in there. You know, it's like generally you know, fusion, 158 grain, man, okay. Uh I don't go around putting different rounds in the wrong box, you know. But uh, the the thing is, the, the original Pythons required so much handwork. And, of course, with the innovations and the CNC machinery and, the, and just in the manufacturing you know, processes and techniques, I, I mean, I guess we should all be happy that now a pretty nice, excuse me, nice farm can be made and, and it doesn't require as much handwork. And, you know, so it can come out and it can be made for less than $3,000. So I, I'm encouraged. 
And I want Colt to succeed and survive, and hopefully this will help. Firearms like this. All right, I'm gonna try a buffalo. There we go. It's good for buffalo hunting. It's good for anything. How about ram hunting? <laughs> Feels pretty good. I think I've taken everything out right here. Let's uh, pop that red plate on the left. All right, let's try the one on the right. Let's, let's miss it again. Am I empty? Okay. Now I got another round. high maybe i was hitting that red plate with the standard 357 magnum oh, this may be I don't know, a little hotter or something who knows but uh it yeah it shoots it shoots well and uh it you know no problems so uh anyway this is one sample of the python and uh i am uh i am fairly pleased you know, I could make, I could, uh, the negatives would be this stuff that's on the frame. Don't need that. Yeah, I, you know, rather than I have that on the frame, the serial number, the, the uh, code. Uh, uh, what else? The grips, I'd like a little wider. I'm not crazy about the grips. I have no problem with the trigger. Uh, in single action, it's okay too. I think it's a little heavier than, than mine, but it's okay. It's fine. Just a little heavier. Nice crisp break. Um, you know, I, I just can't find a lot about it not to like. Uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, I'm going to shoot six more, and I'm going to let you go. Okay? Can I shoot six more? I just uh, feel like I need to fire it again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a revolver is maybe not your cup of tea, although it should be, because they're fun to shoot. And these are expensive, even though they're a lot less than the originals. But... If, if they prove to be good and the quality that they, they seem to be, you know, it still might be something that uh, you want at some point in your life. You don't know what your financial situation might be, you know, uh, two years from now. And then a lot of people, a lot of us, we, we, you know, I've gone through those spells where you, you buy a lot of these inexpensive guns. Before you know it, you got a safe full or a closet full of, you know, 200 or $300 guns or $400 guns. And, uh, and then say you can't afford one of these and you, know, you got 29 three hundred dollar guns you know, so it's a matter of you know, uh, consult lots of times i've noticed with gun owners and shooters and i've done the same thing myself over the years you you gradually at some point being okay i like that gun i bought i got this one i you know really i don't shoot these five or six eight different guns very much you know uh i might just and i've gone i've gone through this where i'm going to kind of focus on maybe better firearms and trade some of these and kind of get rid of the numbers and, and go for a little more quality that kind of thing so we're all in different places but just something to think about 1500 bucks is a lot of money for anybody really almost but uh but still not necessarily totally out of a person's reach all right let's shoot that red that disc over there if i can and Uh, no, uh -oh. we had a misfire. That was a, uh, uh, you know, single action. So we'll make sure it's not a hang fire. And open her up and take a look at it. Okay. It's like a pretty good strike on the on the case. You know what? I think actually actually it did hit that. It actually fired. You know what must have happened? The cylinder didn't turn. Okay. Uh oh. Yep. There we go. 
That's what was happening uh, in the video I saw on somebody. There we go. Now it turned. I shoot it again. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Let's turn it. Okay, so there we go. We'll empty it out. Okay, I think it's empty now. All right, so there you go. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. So they're all fired, but it wasn't capturing. That would be the hand that turns, hits this ratchet, and turns the... Uh, the cylinder and working now but it wasn't working on those on those rounds so anyway uh we'll update you down the road what we find out and uh this one we'll we'll go back and since this was borrowed from buds we'll let them work it out and uh and uh you know send it back to cold or whatever they you know do in that regard but it will be be repaired it won't be a firearm that you know somebody's going to bid on uh if, if you know and, and purchase on on the e-gunner okay uh so well i'm disappointed but that's probably something you know that down the road they can address repair it fix it and make sure that's not happening because that's sort of basic revolver 101 when you get right down to it you know the cylinder needs to turn when you pull the trigger sam colt figured that out in the 1840s so if they get that fixed uh it should be a nice revolver and uh, i look forward to proof that they've got those issues worked out and because uh, other than that I like it. <laughs> so anyway, our little reality show. We appreciate you coming by and taking a look at this revolver. We'll talk to you later. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.